Or how would you advise a pastor today? Right. <clears throat> they can't go back to when they were eight and do it again. But mm -hmm. should they start reading Cicero? Should they start learning Latin if they've never learned it? Yes to both questions. But I think there's a more uh, systemic and even though that word is much abused, uh, a, a, a more systemic and deeper approach that needs to be taken. Um, I, I think as I've thought about this, and my conclusions may not be accurate, but I think that generally um, men have, we as a, a pastorate perhaps, including myself, have perhaps less education than we ought to, is because these things are generally not valued um, mm -hmm. in the churches. And so... Um, the seminaries and the colleges and the universities that produce men for Christian ministry, I think they are primarily responding to what the church is value. If the church is valued a highly literate pastorate, then I think a highly literate pastorate um, would emerge. And um, I really don't want to give the impression that I am putting down my fellow uh, ministers um, in Christian service because I believe that they are doing, by God's grace, very well and as well as they can. And I don't want to elevate the life of the mind above uh, the preaching of the gospel, because I don't think that's appropriate, right? We believe in the perspicuity of Scripture. It's clear. Um, an eighth grader, a sixth grader, a fourth grader, without any kind of special learning, can read the Scriptures or even just hear them preached and come to a saving knowledge of God. I don't want to give the impression that one has to have a lot of learning in order to be a faithful minister. And in fact, in the places that we're talking about, uh, places like Basel and Geneva and Edinburgh and so forth, Strasbourg. Um, sometimes uh, the leading lights of the Reformation that we've mentioned, Beza, Calvin, uh, Junius, and so forth, they would ordain men to gospel ministry who had very little education and send them out into the villages and um, parishes so that God's word would be readily available to the common people. And that's very important. But that's a separate question than... What is the ideal kind of preparation for a minister, all things being equal, right? In hard times, with small resources, with persecution, and the kinds of things they faced, we maybe don't have the leisure to pursue the optimal kind of education. Mm. But if we do have those opportunities, then some men at least should be strongly encouraged to get that kind of education rather than lowering the bar for everyone. Mm. 